Is 16 gigabytes of RAM enough or should you pay the extra 400 US dollars and upgrade to the 32 gigabyte option? In this video, we're going to compare these two machines, a base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook on the left and the exact same model, but with the upgraded 32 gigabytes of RAM on the right. We're going to see if that extra RAM helps you in day to day usage and also if you'll see any significant performance boost. We'll be checking out RAM usage, swap usage, memory pressure, and how much RAM apps can use. I'll also be telling you who should upgrade RAM and who should not. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So before we get into the video, let's just discuss these machines, the M1 Pro chip in particular, and why it's so confusing when it comes to RAM upgrades. So number one, the internal SSD on both of these devices are exceptionally fast. So with these base model 512 gigabyte SSDs, you're looking at around a 4.5 gigabytes per second read and write speed. And if you do choose to increase the size of the SSD, that speed will actually increase up to about 7.4 gigabytes per second with the maxed out storage option. Also, don't forget with the M1 Pro architecture, it has a bandwidth of 200 gigabytes per second. So what that means is that the RAM is able to communicate with the rest of the system very, very quickly. And combined with the super fast SSD, if you do need to use swap memory and you've maxed out the available physical RAM, you're probably not gonna notice much of a difference because of those super fast internal SSDs and that improved 200 gigabytes per second bandwidth. Now, throughout my testing of all of these different M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks, I found that if you're just concentrating on a single program, there's often not much difference between the two RAM options. You're generally not gonna notice any difference between 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM because of those factors I mentioned before. Now there are a couple of exceptions to this where having more RAM is actually going to be beneficial, but this is gonna be for specific users and specific workflows. And it's probably not gonna be something that you will be able to take advantage of. But more on that a little bit later on in the video. Now, all of that being said, one of the main benefits of additional RAM is increased multitasking capability. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. By the way, quick thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. Optimize performance and increase the storage space on your Mac with Trend Micro Cleaner One Pro. Cleaner One Pro is an all-in-one Mac cleaning and optimization tool, which comes with many useful features. You can free up disk space by removing junk and hidden files with just one click. And it also provides you with a visual and interactive map, which will help you filter, manage, and free up large files on your disk. Another great feature is the file shredder, which allows you to erase the leftover files from deleted apps or trash, making them unrecoverable. Click the link in the description below to check out Cleaner One Pro, a must have Mac cleaner and optimization tool. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to restart both of these machines to flush out the memory cache. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna have a couple of different scenarios so that we can test and see the differences between the two RAM options. Now I will also have timestamps down below guys. So if you wanna to skip to a relevant section, you can. In all of these tests, however, I will have the same amount of web browsing tabs open in the background. As you can see here, I have Google Chrome open with the exact same five tabs open. So a little bit of a mixture of some online shopping, some YouTube, um, some Twitter. So that's just gonna sit down there uh, all the time. And now I also have Safari open. So we have the same two 4K videos playing in each browser. Uh, we've also got, again, some online shopping, a uh, couple of different websites here, uh, some online articles, some more online shopping, and then finally a weather website. Apart from that, we also have Adobe Creative Cloud sitting online up here, but that's it between the two. They're both exactly the same. I'll also come up here and I will show you about this Mac so that you can see that these are indeed 16 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Everything else is exact same. The M1 Pros, 14 inch, eight core CPU, 14 core GPU, and exact same SSDs. So before we get these scenarios started, Let's just check out the RAM usage and what we're sitting at at idle. So starting with the 14 inch M1 Pro, we're using about 11 gigabytes of the total available RAM. 
you can see swap used is zero bytes, so that's good. And then moving over to the 32 gigabyte M1 Pro, you can see we're using just a little bit more memory, about a gigabyte and a half at 12.8 gigabytes. And once again, no swap memory. Memory pressure between the two is almost non-existent, as you can see. And this is to be expected for essentially doing almost nothing at all. Okay, so the first scenario is some 3D modeling. And guys, I'm gonna try and make these scenarios as close to real life as I can. So real world application. As you guys can see, I have the Splash Fox demo scene on Blender. Uh, it is playing back perfectly fine on both devices. And I also have a relatively large Photoshop file open in the background. So this particular file is around a gigabyte in size, uh, multiple, multiple layers, you know, Gaussian blur, all kind of effects applied. Um, so that is in the background. And obviously don't forget, we still have all of those 4K videos playing in YouTube in the background and about 15 tabs spread across uh, Safari and also Google Chrome. So let's jump into Activity Monitor and we'll see what the memory pressure is like. So just before we jump into the Activity Monitor, you can see that I've switched to the rendered preview view. I'm going to play both of these scenes in the background. And uh, you can see the actual FPS playback is about the same between the two, almost exactly the same. We're getting about two FPS. Now switching into Activity Monitor, I've definitely noticed a little bit of system lag. And looks like at the moment, we've got about seven and a half gigabytes on the 16 gigabyte version and about six and a half gigabytes on the 32 gig version. So uh, physical memory. So we're using almost all of the available memory on the 16 gigabyte RAM version, we are using 1.5 gigabytes of swap memory. And you can see the memory pressure is actually starting to get a little bit up there. Now contrast that with the 32 gigabyte version, you can see that we are still maxing out most of the available memory. We've got about four or five gigabytes free, but the actual memory pressure is not bad at all. So if I now do a little bit of tab switching between the two, they both seem to be working okay. If I bring up the window view, we can see that there's a little bit of system lag between the two. Doesn't seem like the 32 gig version is particularly more responsive. They seem about the same. And if we now switch between these two desktops, uh, they're both almost exactly as laggy as each other. So guys, you can turn off these animations in system preferences uh, if you don't like it. And that means you'll basically It'll be nice and smooth. I won't for the purpose of this video, just so you can sort of get a look at how Mac OS will respond. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to come up here and we're just gonna pause these first of all. I'm gonna render out 30 frames of this particular scene. Now this is an EV project as you can see here. We're using the EV render engine. So I'm gonna render out 30 frames. We're gonna time it and we're gonna see if there's a massive difference between the two. Okay, so we're going to render the animation and we're going to start the timer. Okay, so we are now up to frame number eight, as you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner. So let's check out the memory pressure and the RAM usage and see how each device is responding. So no surprises here, the 16 gigabyte model is really starting to struggle. You can see that memory pressure is getting into the yellow and the red areas. Uh, we're using about 13 gigabytes of RAM versus on the 32 gigabyte version, you can see that memory pressure is looking nice and green. We're not using any swap. Uh, we are using three gigabytes of swap on the 16 gig version. Uh, nothing over here. Uh, and we're using about the exact same amount of RAM. So now if we come into Safari and we check out these 4K videos, you can see again, a little bit of lag. Uh, what will often happen when the RAM is maxed out on Mac OS is these 4K videos will really start to stutter in their playback. Uh, you can see that's happening on both of these devices. Um, more noticeably for some reason on the 32 gigabyte version, although the 16 gigabyte version is not far behind. If we now move to the next video and have a look, both are responding relatively the same. So getting a little bit of stuttering uh, and then moving between the tabs uh, we're definitely having to reload a couple of tabs here. Seems like Safari is 
suspending them. Uh, Blender's still fine. So is ASOS, Mac Rumors, that's fine. The Created Tech website, all working fine. The scrolling is slightly better on the 32 gigabyte version. It's more responsive. So let's just minimize that and let's come into Photoshop and let's see what we can do. Okay, so a little bit laggy, just scrolling through all of the different parts. Uh, if we try to move this object, that moves relatively well, no issues. And likewise on the 32 gigabyte version, uh, that's moving pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so we've just finished rendering 30 frames of this Blender scene. And surprisingly, both machines completed that render in almost the exact amount of time. Only one or two seconds difference between the two machines, which is very impressive because this has double the amount of RAM. Okay, let's move on to the next scenario, which is video editing. So again, guys, this is gonna be a real life example of what many editors out there will be doing. So I've just gone through and reloaded all of these browser tabs. You can see um, they are popping up nice and quick now because they've just been reloaded. So let's minimize that. I've also done the same with Chrome. I do have compressor open in the background. Now I'm not gonna be doing any kind of transcoding, it's just gonna be open in the background. And this is pretty indicative of someone who's editing videos because they're gonna be probably transcoding clips here or there. So they're probably gonna to wanna to have this particular app open all the time. And then the main program we're gonna be using is DaVinci Resolve. Now this is the Apple Silicon optimized version. I do have some Sony A7S Mark III footage on the timeline here. It's 4K, 422, 10-bit, really, really compressed codec. And as you guys can see, it is playing back no issues at all. And while this is playing, in the background, I'm gonna open up some 6K B-RAW footage, and I'm going to play this in the background at the same time. And now we're gonna come into the activity monitor, and we're going to check it out. Okay, so we can see on the 16 gigabyte RAM version, Photoshop is using the most, followed by DaVinci Resolve, and then the Blackmagic RAW player. Memory pressure is not looking too bad. Uh, we're using only about 10 gigabytes of memory, including about two gigabytes of swap. And on the 32 gigabyte RAM option, memory pressure is again looking very nice, using about 20 gigabytes of RAM total. And with Photoshop being the biggest offender, taking up 4.3 gigabytes. And again, guys, swiping through, we're having zero issues at all. It's nice and smooth, uh, a lot smoother than when we were rendering out that Blender scene. Um, so there's zero issues there at all too. You can see that video is playing uh, very nicely in the background. Okay, let's now come into DaVinci Resolve and let's actually render out this six minute 4K timeline. We're going to select the default YouTube 4K settings and we're gonna render this project out. So we're about 10% through the render and as you can see, Again, really not a massive difference between the two. We've still got about four gigabytes of free memory on the 16 inch. We're using about 1.8 gigabytes of swap. Memory pressure is still green, so it's not too bad. The 32 gig version is definitely performing better. You have a little bit more breathing room, but again, we're just not really maxing out that RAM on either device. And don't forget as well, guys, we've still got all of these things down the bottom. So I've got Photoshop, that same big Photoshop file, open in the background. And again, this is pretty indicative of what most video editors will be doing. They'll be working on a photo or a thumbnail, for example, in the background, and they will more than likely have Photoshop open. And while rendering, let's just do a quick swipe test. No issues there at all, popping in between the different viewports there, all working fine. If we jump into Google Chrome, this is still working totally fine, none of the tabs need to be reloaded, so looking pretty good so far. Now the render is finished, and again guys, uh, zero difference at all. So this was technically one second faster, but one second is well within the margin of error. So they're both performing exactly the same. So moving on to the next scenario, which is photo editing, I have Lightroom open here. Uh, it is the Lightroom classic version. I've got 50 24 megapixel raw photos loaded into this library. 
Uh, I've also got Photoshop in the background, that exact same Photoshop file I've been using. Also, obviously all the 4K videos, the Safari tabs, the Google Chrome tabs, uh, that's all still there as well. Uh, scrubbing through these images are working perfectly fine. Even if I hold it down, uh, you can see it's super, super quick. There's no differences at all between the two. Moving into the activity monitor, again, pretty consistent throughout these different scenarios. Uh, the 16 gigabyte version is handling it like a champ. Uh, the 32 gigabyte version is absolutely smoking it. Um, but in day-to-day -day usage, not much difference so far. Now, I will talk about at the end of the video where there are some situations in Lightroom where you will see a massive difference between 16 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, but that's more advanced stuff. So if you're getting into panoramic shots or really high megapixel libraries with massive amounts of photos, but again, I'll leave that for the later half of the video. For now, let's jump in here and let's export these 50 photos and we'll see if there's a difference between the two. Okay, so we are now exporting, as we can see, plenty of gigabytes of RAM free on the 32 gig version. Also on the 16, not looking too shabby. Uh, we've got about three and a half gigabytes of free using about 1.2 gigabytes of swap, zero swap on the 32 gigabyte version. We are just about to finish both of these exports and they are done. So they both finished in exactly 33 seconds. Once again, guys, absolutely no difference between the two. Swiping, totally fine. Uh, multitasking works fine as well. So really struggling to find a difference so far. All right, moving on to the next scenario, which is After Effects. And as you guys might already know, if you are a frequent user of After Effects, this thing can really eat up RAM. So it's not uncommon for people to be using 64 gigabytes as a minimum for many After Effects files. Um, as you can see here, I just have a relatively basic one. It's just the end screen for my YouTube videos. So if I play this now, uh, you know, it's playing back fine. Got a couple of different animations there, a couple of different layers, nothing too crazy. As you can see there, if I just play the whole thing from the start, a couple of different shapes, some text, um, some animations there, just really basic. Um, now let's actually change the playback resolution to full just to see if there's any difference at all. Uh, and let's play this. And this one seems to be playing just a tiny bit quicker. So we're getting around one or two FPS more on the 32 gigabyte version. Um, Okay, so we're now actually almost at double the FPS. So we're about 20 FPS uh, over here. Uh, this is starting to speed up a little bit now. Okay, so now we're replaying. So this is definitely quicker on the 32 gigabyte version. Obviously it's been able to buffer in RAM just a little bit quicker than on the 16 gigabyte version. So I'm gonna keep these two playing in the background. We're gonna come to the activity monitor and we're gonna see what's happening. So no surprises, After Effects is using almost 12 and a half gigabytes on the 16 gigabyte RAM version. Memory pressure there, starting to get a little bit toasty. Uh, we've all but maxed out the RAM. Surprisingly, Swap is not being slammed that much. Versus the 32 gigabyte version, you can see that After Effects is really starting to take advantage of that additional RAM using 24 gigabytes which is double what it's using on the 16 gigabyte version. And then if we look at the memory pressure on the 32 gig version, not too bad at all. And we've still got about three gigabytes free and we're using zero swap memory. Now again, guys, remember I have all those tabs in the background. I also have the same Photoshop template there as well, the same large one gigabyte file. If we try moving around this ellipse, that's working pretty well, that's very responsive. Likewise, on the 32 gigabyte version, exact same, no issues. Uh, switching between apps, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine as well. And obviously the reason I have Photoshop open is a lot of you guys like to use Adobe Dynamic Link. I personally don't. Um, it's more so within After Effects and Premiere Pro, but I believe you can still use it with Photoshop and After Effects, uh, for you guys that are really into the Adobe systems, 
uh, you would know more than me. Okay, so let's come into file and let's export this project. So now we're going to export this and I'm actually going to use Adobe Media Encoder to do this. Uh, as you can see here, we're going to do it in H.264, that's the codec. The preset is just going to be the YouTube 4K Ultra HD. Uh, so let's come up here and let's start this encode. Okay, so we're now rendering down the bottom. Let's have a quick look at the activity monitor. Uh, memory pressure is starting to get pretty big on the 16 gigabyte version. Uh, but on the 32 gigabyte version, it doesn't seem to be doing too bad. You can see After Effects is really starting to take advantage of that 32 gigabytes. Whereas on this version, you're capped at 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now swiping between the two, no issues at all. Multitasking uh, seems really nice. If we come into Photoshop, uh, we move some layers around, working totally fine as well. Now fast forward a couple of minutes, you can see that this is definitely exporting a lot quicker than the 16 gigabyte RAM version. See the progress bar down there. This has about 40 seconds remaining and this has over three minutes still remaining. So we're definitely starting to see a massive performance gap between the two with programs such as After Effects. Okay guys, so the 32 gigabyte version finished uh, a while ago. This is still going and interestingly enough, you can see that Adobe After Effects is using about 12 gigabytes. Uh, the actual render core is using 8.4 gigabytes. And then obviously you have Adobe Media Encoder using about 1.5 gigabytes. So swap memory is starting to get quite large. You can see about 3.5 gigabytes. So it's very clear that the 16 gigabyte version is very, very limited when it comes to projects like this. Okay, so the 16 gigabyte has finally finished the render. I've just pulled up the log file for both of them. So you can see the 16 gigabyte version took 11 minutes and 29 seconds versus the 32 gigabyte version, which finished in just two minutes and five seconds. So very, very clear difference there by a factor of almost about five in favor of the 32 gigabyte RAM model. Okay guys, so it's time for the ultimate, unrealistic, totally not real world stress test. So as you can see, I have a number of different applications open. So I have Cinebench, I've also got Blender, I've also got Resolve, and obviously I've also got the same 4K videos and all of the tabs playing in the background. And I also have the same Adobe Photoshop uh, file open as well. So. What we're going to do is we're going to minimize this. We are going to come onto Cinebench. We are going to start a multi-core CPU benchmark. We're going to come into Blender and we are going to render the Splash Fox animation using the EV render engine. So we're gonna start that, we're gonna start the timer. And we're also going to come down into DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna render out this same six minute 4K timeline. So we're gonna render that as well. Okay, so all of these things are now happening in the background. Let's do some swiping between desktops. Working totally fine. Uh, switching between window view, no issues at all. If we now come into Safari, getting a little bit of lag now and you can see that these videos are struggling to play back in real time, they are a little bit choppy. Um, switching between tabs is not a massive deal either. Little bit of lag, uh, nothing too crazy. If we click on one of these Mac Rumors pages, working totally fine. Scrolling, little bit laggy, little bit unresponsive, but that's totally fine. We are doing three insanely difficult tasks. So, looking at the RAM. So. No surprises at all. The memory pressure is getting pretty crazy on the 16 gig version. We've basically maxed out the RAM. You can get a good look at the different applications and how much RAM they're using up over there. On the 32 gigabyte version, even on this one, the memory pressure is starting to get up there. That's the highest I've ever seen it. Uh, we've basically maxed out the memory. And once again, you can get a better look of the different apps there and how much of the RAM they are taking up. Okay, so we are now two minutes into this insane, totally unrealistic benchmark, and I'm actually surprised 
both machines haven't gone up in flames yet. Uh, as you can see, we're getting a little bit of lag um, when switching between the desktops here. Nothing too crazy. If we come into Photoshop, again, a little bit of a lag uh, in Photoshop actually opening up. Uh, we can still move around these layers relatively well, not as good as we could before. Uh, and then on the 32 gigabyte version, that is moving about the exact same as well. Okay, so uh, if we go to DaVinci Resolve, um, you can see that this one seems to be winning for some reason. It's probably just how Mac OS is prioritizing uh, these different programs. So this is at 57%, this is at 54%. Uh, if we look at Cinebench, this one is clearly in the lead. Uh, and then if we come over to Blender, uh, remember we're wanting to render out 30 frames of this EV scene. You can see both devices are at the exact same frame number and that is 14. So just in case you guys didn't believe me, I brought up the CPU and the GPU history charts. You can see that all of the cores are maxed out. The GPU is completely maxed out as well. On the 16 gigabyte RAM version, we're using almost 10 gigabytes of swap memory. And again, on the 32 gigabyte version, all the CPU cores and all the GPU cores completely maxed out, but no swap memory at all. Memory pressure is still green as well. Okay, so we've finished the Blender render and we've also completed the DaVinci Resolve. As you can see with DaVinci, we've got a little bit of a different result. So we've got five minutes and 44 seconds on the 16 gig RAM version versus six minutes and two seconds on the 32 gigabyte version. Now, I think this was probably mostly just due to Mac OS prioritizing the RAM slightly differently. Uh, I will also compare these results to the previous results when we weren't doing Cinebench benchmarks and also EV rendering on Blender in the background. Pretty respectable result for both of them. I honestly thought the 32 gig version would pull away. If we now check out Blender, and by the way guys, I've left Blender rendering. You can see the GPU cores are slammed. So is the CPU. Uh, the 32 gigabyte version finished the Blender render only about nine seconds quicker. So out of all of that and over about seven and a half minutes total of rendering, it was only about a nine second difference. And if we compare that to the same results we got before, again, while we weren't doing all this crazy Cinebench benchmark in the background, uh, I think that's a pretty respectable result as well. Okay, so as you guys can probably tell, uh, for most of you, there's really no point in spending that additional 400 US dollars and upgrading to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Even in many insane multitasking scenarios, the swap memory implementation in macOS is so good already, paired with the super fast internal SSDs at 4.5 gigabytes per second, plus the 200 gigabytes per second bandwidth of the M1 Pro chip. Uh, you're just really gonna be hard pressed to find a difference between the 16 and the 32 gigabyte RAM versions. And this is gonna be even more pronounced if you're the type of person to focus on one task at a time. So if you just use Lightroom, or if you just use Photoshop, or if you just use a video editing program with maybe some very light multitasking in the background, like emails and some Safari tabs, I really don't think you're gonna see a difference between 16 gigs and 32 gigs. But, and there's always a but guys, like you saw with After Effects, there are some situations where you're gonna see a massive benefit with that extra RAM. So one other example is photo editors, for example, working with massive projects, such as a 300 megapixel panorama in Lightroom. Check out this video by a YouTuber called Art Is Right. I'll link his video down below. He goes into much more detail on this subject, much more than what I can. And in a lot of his tests, you can see a massive, massive difference between 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes. Once you start getting up into those really complex and really high quality photos, and Lightroom projects. You'll also see the same with large Photoshop files. For example, something that's about 16 gigabytes in size 
with heaps of layers. Again, you'll just see a much bigger difference actually editing that particular Photoshop project. And then when it comes to saving it and exporting it, it's gonna be much faster with that additional RAM. And again, as you guys saw with After Effects, there just are some programs out there that can really take advantage. So make sure you do your research before deciding to upgrade between 16, 32, or even 64 gigabytes. And obviously those of you that work with massive 3D projects such as After Effects, you saw firsthand on this particular test that you're gonna see a massive difference with that additional RAM. As you guys know, apps like Photoshop and After Effects can be very, very RAM hungry. So even though we're using super fast and tightly integrated unified memory, at the end of the day, still, even now, the more RAM you throw at it, the better it's gonna perform. One thing to mention as well is if you use a lot of virtualization software like Parallels, it's an absolute no brainer. You should get the 32 gigabyte option if you're gonna be doing anything even relatively intensive inside Parallels. As you guys already know, you can allocate as much RAM as you want towards your Parallels virtualization program. So you can add four gigabytes, six gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes doesn't matter, but obviously you physically need that amount of RAM on the computer in order to allocate it. So if you're doing parallels and virtualization stuff, I think definitely spend the extra 400 bucks and get the 32 gigs. And finally, another person who should consider upgrading from 16 to 32 are those people that are both power users and are also heavy multitaskers. So like you guys saw, sometimes you will benefit from just being able to do more and have more programs open. And that is something where having that additional RAM and that additional breathing room can sometimes really start to come into effect. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I have to say I was pretty blown away with the performance of the 16 gigabyte version. I honestly thought it would not do as well as it did. Unified memory just keeps surprising me. I think it will continue to keep surprising me for the next five years. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it made the purchase decision a little bit more obvious and a little bit more easier for you. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.